Hello, and welcome back to the Building with App Sheet series. I'm Google Developer Advocate Christian Schalk, and this is the second video of a two-part series covering actions and workflows. In this video, we'll now focus on workflows. Let's dive in. Recall that App Sheet actions and workflows control the overall behavior of an application, where actions enable application operations involving UI, data, and or third-party integrations and workflows provide rules for automatic execution of actions via either data updates or when scheduled to run. To better understand how actions and workflows work together, here's a diagram that represents their key components. You'll notice that workflows encompass both tasks and reports, where tasks are the operation that workflows can trigger and are essentially the same as actions, but only execute when data changes occur. Reports are just workflows that are scheduled, as opposed to being triggered via data changes. Workflow tasks are of the following types. Number one, notifications such as email, SMS, and mobile. Two, data changes. Three, webhooks to a third-party web service. And four, for document creation. As mentioned, reports are simply workflows that are scheduled. Besides scheduling when to run, they are constructed essentially in the same way that regular workflows are. Let's switch to the demo app now and build some workflows. So here we are in our demo app from the prior video, and this is where we created several actions to enhance the functionality. I'm now gonna click on the workflow tab here at the top, and we're gonna create a workflow rule, all right? So I can create it from scratch right here, or I'm just gonna go ahead and select the add email automations. And then what this does is it gives us three example email automations, one for change value and removal, as well as additions. So since I only want to focus on the additions, I'm going to delete these first two. And then it just, that leaves me with just the additions. And then I'll, all I have to do is just double check a few of the things here. Yes, it's going against tasks. The update event is just for ads. So that's exactly what I want. And then I go into the do this section and that has this task here, the email task. And so this is already set up in a default manner it's going to send an email to the owner of the tasks email that is. And um, then it has essentially like the, both the subject and an email body that's given to me already for free. Now, all I have to do to run this is save it and then just create a new task. And that will actually send an email to that particular owner. So this will work. And I've already shown how that works in the uh, previous working with data video, but for this one, I'm going to go ahead and enhance it a little bit more. So just to show you, I could actually create a, um, an attachment of type PDF. Then I can you know, specify a template for the attachment. And to do that, all I have to do is click create. And that will give me a new blank or a new template document, which I can then customize. So there we go. We have our new template document. I'll click on view. And here is our template and I can customize it however I want. So maybe I want to change the color or something like that. And then, you know, that's about it. There we go. There. So now I have my uh, document that's a template now. And so when the workflow runs, it will use that template and attach it to the actual email. All right. So let's go ahead and hit save. So that's just like a slight variation off of the previous workflow that I had showed earlier in the video in the previous videos that is. All right, so let's go ahead and, and test it. So I'm gonna click on plus in the app, and then I'm just gonna say test workflow. And let's leave everything as is. Um, I'll go ahead and specify the owner or the task owner that is, and I'll hit save. And so that will persist it over to the uh, backend data source, my spreadsheet. And then let's just go over to the email and I'll just wait for the uh, document to get generated and sent. And there we go. We have our email that has come in and you can see it has like the, the standard text that I didn't really change. But then more importantly, here is the actual attached PDF report that was based off of that template. And there we go. We have our custom made template uh, or report uh, that was generated into a PDF. Anyway, pretty, pretty cool stuff. With a minimal action, I was able to create this uh, little workflow that sends a PDF. So that's pretty much it for what I wanted to show for this particular workflow. I'm gonna click over to reports. So let's briefly walk through how you would create a report. 
So similar to before, let's go ahead and generate a uh, default report here. And if you recall, reports are just like workflows, except they're triggered not on data updates, but instead you schedule when you want them to run. So here you can see there's a scheduler where I can specify when, you know, I might want to run the report. And then for the actual fulfillment of the report, you have a very similar mechanism where you set up tasks. Uh, and here's the default one that it gave me, but you can do the sec essentially the same types of tasks that you would do with like a regular report. That's pretty much it for what I want to show for how you would set up a report for now. I'll show more later in future videos. This concludes the two-part Actions and Workflows episodes. For more info on AppSheet, Google Cloud, and Workspace, check out the links in the description below. And for more videos like this, make sure you subscribe to this series so you don't miss out. Thanks for watching.